Right. We'll read some more. Well, let's and, see what Jay's headline is. So we're going to do headlines, headline. and we're going to bring in Justin. This was Jay's headline. Yeah, okay. And we'll go around the horn after. Savali shipwrecks Mariners again. I like it that. is time to start believing. He doubled up on again. That's only the, job. the only flaw. You only can't flaw. double up on a word. Yeah. You can't double up. And we're out I of do it's a good though. it's a good headline, but we can't do we, again and again. We are out of practice. We can't use again again. My, my listen, I gave him the most generic joint in the world. I'm like, I forgot we was competing in these headlines. That's right. Dang Dang should we go to Brad now, Mikey? Brad, yep, Brad next. All right, All right what we got go. Brad. Uh, Oh, the, oh, yeah, the Guardians have entered the building. Fresh off the, the, the swing from the out west. It oh. is now, but this is... The only the, issue with your headline, Brad, Beavers is it's all about the Beavers and Beavers. No, 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 I'm talking, about this, I'm talking about the season. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, Elevate your thinking uh, oh, here. Oh, we're going to go to the judges. <laughs> judges, so we're going to take the season. Elevate your thinking here. Mm. Uh, oh. A little season uh, over here. We're getting uh, a thumbs down from uh, Mikey. Uh, Mikey's, Mikey can't judge nothing. <laughs> I have the best one today, guarantee. Mikey don't know. Okay. Oh, you did one? I guarantee I have the best one today. Okay, we're going to yours now? We're going no, we're going to mine uh, last. It's in order. G's up next. G, you're up. I don't, you know, I don't remember what I text you. <laughs> you got to be on the board. Here. It was real generic. <laughs> Guards picking up where they left off. Young gun shine in the home opener. I like that. I undersold myself. Of my course stuff. you would like it. It's I, yours. I, I undersold <laughs> it. I didn't, I, I didn't know the genius behind it. I mean, it's, it's, it's solid. <laughs> now, now it's, it's very generic to me. It's, it's a little it's generic. Not, oh, did you catch that? You said, he didn't, he didn't understand the genius behind it. You I see what I'm saying? <laughs> this stuff. See what I'm saying? Like, you, 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 you you're see, bumping yourself up to genius. You, 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 you <laughs> didn't see who was a, it's all in the picture. <laughs> you're crazy. So the, Miles Straw was in there. Listen, shout out to him, man. Yeah, wait a second. Show man, me wait, genius wait, again, wait, 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 wait. Now he's claiming, he's claiming the, 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 the picture. The, the picture. He didn't even do it. He didn't even know the pictures. <laughs> now, now he got pictures. Young gun shot. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Who is on the right there? I can't even tell. That's that's uh Quan. Quan. Oh, that's Quan. Yeah. Jimenez. And that's Oscar Gonzalez, Gonzalez and Jimenez. And yeah. Oscar Gonzalez. It's hard to tell. I like Anthony's little. And my uh, eyes are not as good as Anthony's. But I like that. I'll come right in on All second right, place. I'll, I'll, I'll take the second place. Nah, good job place. by Anthony. <laughs> I, got and my best. I got you. Like got having you. three actual young players. Yeah, see that? He, he G got, did give me those names. I, okay. I went and got all three now, of Now, to be fair, the Guardians don't have a lot of you old should, players. But never let the truth it would have been hard to screw that up. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Never let the truth get in the way and, of a good and, story. I got to teach you. Anthony had to sprinkle on G's to make it <laughs> yeah, sell. Yeah. I got it. Okay. You I think Zanino and uh, <laughs> Bell are the two oldest players, right? <laughs> Is Bell older than Jose? I think so. They're around the same age, at least. Uh, I, think I appreciate older. that Mrs. Dash you gave me. <laughs> Bell's 30, uh, turns 31 this year, so he's older than Jose. Yeah. We put some old right. bay on right. it for you. All right, <laughs> All right next up, Bull. You. There's mine. <laughs> Jose, 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 Jose. 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 I went specific. Dang. Three run bomb in the ninth leads guards to walk off win. And, and, and you gave. Now, if I get that, yeah. and by the way, even if he gets a even if he gets a solo homer or a two run homer, I get bad job out of you if it's a solo I, I, shot. And, and if he gets none, and, well then I'm out of luck. And, and the messed up part, you see how they did this? Then you gonna get booed. I got yeah, color. color, yeah, color you got yeah. a color. Yeah, I got color, color on mine. It's color, exploding yeah. and all kind of like, come on, man. I went from Anthony wanting wait to trade me to get a color. Mics. Man, there's some inside training trading going on here. Man, listen, yes, it is. Anthony it. was gonna trade me two months ago. We did that uh, other thing. No, no, no. You were getting cut. Jason was getting traded. <laughs> Anthony's is up next. Anthony made his own Got here. Okay. Anthony? Let's see what Anthony yeah, did. Yeah, take it. Baby, come back. <laughs> Lone That's Hedges fan good. is confused by Mike Zanino. <laughs> That's kind of good. <laughs> that is good. That's what is good. Anthony holding there in his right arm? What is uh, happening? That is uh, Orange Fanta Pop from a Cavs game, I think. And he uh, erased remember. it, too. That's crazy. By the way, I've now lived in Cleveland for approaching 12 years. It's so, it's pop. And I still giggle every time somebody says pop. It's pop. See, it's not pop. soda. Yeah. I still giggle. 12 yeah. years I'm living here. And even when I was in college, when I was in college at Brockport, which is halfway between Rochester and Buffalo, New York, mm. that's the dividing line, by the way. Did you know that? What? The dividing so line between soda and pop is, it? is, is somewhere between, well, <coughs> it's actually between Syracuse Rochester? and Rochester. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somewhere between Syracuse and Rochester is the dividing line between soda and pop. Why it happens there, I have no idea. But I live... Six years in my college town and almost 12 years here. That's 18 of my – that's about 40% of my life. And yet I still giggle every time somebody says pop. Yeah. Does, does, I don't know what it is. Aaron, what do you say? I say 
Williams. Wow. So so he's he's he was even born here, right? Yes. He's a Clevelander through and through. So he says some words like a Clevelander and some words like a New Yorker. It's a he's a mixed bag. He's yeah, a mutt. Yeah, yeah. There you what go. Are you do? Um, uh, by the way, you know what they call? Do you guys know what they call a you know like a sub sandwich? You know what we call it in, a in New York? No, that's Philly. Oh. They call it something in Connecticut too. A wedge. A grinder. A gr- I never heard of that one. In Connecticut, it's a grinder. What do you uh, call Connecticut's it? Irrelevant. What do you call it? Hold on. A grind? What do you mean? No, 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 no. Yeah, it's Let weird. You order a 12 grinder. In New York, it's called a hero. It's real suspect. Is it? A hero. You guys didn't know that? Brad, you've been around. You've lived Man, all over the I place. I that mess. <laughs> Brad, <he's> like. <laughs> My favorite place <laughs> for things. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Four. Hero. You got a meatball like, hero, a chicken if, parm hero. I you, know that. Yeah. You invite, I, I know that. If you invite me and Brad, black people don't eat anything. Like, uh, but your grandmother can make something. We'd be like, no. Nah. You, no. can't tell, you can't tell grandma. Sure no. can. I oh, sure can. can. <laughs> I would be right there. You're telling you do it in a very polite way. Very uh, polite way. All right, I'm, fair enough. I'm, I'm I have my headlines still. I'm, oh, let's I'm, see I'm Mikey's cool. headlines. Which is the winner I'm here. Watching my I'm, weight. Uh, watching my weight. Yeah, Steve, right. take it. I, I got a bad. I got let's some see Mikey's bad. Draw an order. Seattle Victims Unit. Miles Walkoff home run leaves Mariners asking questions. He's hitting his first home run since August. I got to give him credit. That's August 29th, 2021. With the, with the, uh, his first home uh, run. And the sound, the sound effect, effect, too. You got auto-tune on your stuff? This, this dude, you, you cheater. This, this dude's got V-Mix and all kind Damn. of graphics. That's a nice job by That's you, Mike. That's a nice Thank one, you. bro. I mean, if Straw has a big game, you're the winner. If Straw hits a home run, I'll... Yeah, no, Straw hit a home run. Let's not get crazy. He's the best seasons. player in the team. I'm more likely to hit a home run than Straw. Miles Straw, the best player in the team. Let's not get what? <laughs> what? What police logo is that? City of Cleveland? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anthony uh, made it. I checked so. it. I saw well it. Well done, I fellas. It. Hey, listen. How well many done. hours did McNuggets have you in here changing up that stuff? That took you 30 minutes this morning. That, All right. Know. We're going to bring in Justin Lotta now. Uh, he, but first, he, while we bring in Justin from the Locked On Guardians podcast. But first, yes, Mikey, go ahead. Well, we bring in Justin. I want to remind everybody the lunch hour of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show is sponsored by Colleague Racing, the official NASCAR team of Northeast Ohio. Later this month, the Great Lake Collectors Convention presented by Greeny Sports Card is taking over the Fieldhouse in Independence, Ohio, April 14th through the 16th. It's where the passions of sports fans, collectors, and sports talk enthusiasts collide. 50,000 square feet of ball card bliss, hundreds of display tables, Card Shop Live Theater with interactive appearances from the region's most notable sports media members, including G. Bush, Adam the Bull, Jay Crawford, and many, many more. Great cards, great location, great show. Tickets on sale now at greenysportscards.com, and you can win some free tickets by heading to wkyc.com slash contest. We're giving, her out, giving out four VIP passes for the weekend and 20 free admission tickets. Check it out, wkyc.com slash contests. By the way, I was looking, and this is going to be a really fun event in uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, so come join us there. I was looking to see when Tanner Bybee was going to make his first start, and then I saw your tweet that he's starting today, right? Yeah, he starts tonight for Columbus. He was supposed to start last night, but right. then they had a rain out the other night, and they pushed everybody back a day, so okay. he's starting a doubleheader today for them. Do you agree, Justin, that do you think he's the first of their big arms to come up? It's going to be tough. Like, it depends on the machinations of the 40-man roster, right? Because he's not on the 40. Things are super tricky they got a right tight now. 40. Yeah, like Joey Cantillo's on the 40, but I don't think he's quite ready. They got to be careful with him. Yeah. And what we saw them do with last year with like Bo Naylor, Will Brennan, a bunch of guys that had to be on the 40 this coming year. Yeah. They got them up early into the, the the team to help them out. So like Logan Allen's in that position this year. He pitched really well last night. So I kind of wonder if Logan Allen maybe ends up being the first guy, but. Tanner Bybee is going to, I think, push himself up to the top of that conversation, and we will see him this year. And by the way, again, for those who don't realize, this is not the same Logan Allen that was here before. Yeah, yes. like I, he sat down. I was yeah. like, wasn't he just here like yeah, two yeah. days ago? This is a different Logan yeah, Allen. Yeah, he's, he's slightly younger. It's actually three Logan Allens. There was one for yeah. Tampa Bay. They just caught him. I said, oh, the Guardian should uh, pull off the trifecta and sign oh, the other Logan oh. Allen. <laughs> Confuse everybody Bring them now. all in. So, okay, so we'll see about that. We were talking earlier about Savali and Plesak, and Let's start with Plesak in particular. He was awful in his first start. I'm sure you agree you don't write a guy off of the one start, but out of all their pitchers, I got the least faith in him. Is Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I think he's got a short leash. I mean, it wasn't good last year. He's had some self-inflicted injuries, you know, too, so that kind That's of right. plays into things. And if they had more depth, if they had more guys to look at, I think he could be on a tighter leash. I think the Tristan McKenzie injury really affects things. No doubt. You know, if Tristan McKenzie's healthy, I feel like the leash could be a little bit tighter on him. Um, but now you've got, you know, Curry in the bullpen, who was supposed to be in AAA, and Gaddis, who's in the bullpen, or in the yeah. rotation now, 
who was giving me the bullpen because of the Cody Morris injury. So all those right. things affect that. So that's going to give Plesak a lot longer of a that's look true. To, to turn it around. But, you know, they're going to be careful. There's a lot of innings to cover. It's a long season. Curry did pitch well out of the pen the other day. I can't remember which game that was, but he went five innings, and he, yeah. I thought he looked pretty good. Yeah, he gave up one run, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Do you – who do you – so we, we just – Bull hates Miles Straw. Well, he doesn't hate him. I don't hate him. Hate him. He, don't don't hate, hate him. He, 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 he likes his glove. He feels his stick. I, I just – I'm not going to get carried away over one week. The guy is not a particularly good hitter. Now, listen, I'm not saying – I'm fine with him. I'm just – last year, when you had three holes in the lineup, it was bad. If he's your seventh best hitter, it's a problem. I'm fine with him being their ninth best hitter, can, which is what he is. Can, Obviously, it hasn't been in the first obviously, week. Obviously, I don't think what he's doing at the plate is sustainable. Um, do you think wh- where are you? Where's your margin for him? What you know? Where does he have to hit for you to say, okay, he's a mainstay in this lineup still? I don't worry about the average. Like if he has a 320 on base, yeah. that's great. Out of your nine hole, because what he leads the American League or Major Leagues in stolen bases yep. right now. Mm-hmm. If you're getting your nine guy on base. 32% of the time, that's pretty good. Like, if he was hitting your, being your leadoff hitter like he was to start the year last year, that's probably not great. But he also brings a lot of defense. He has that contract. You know, it's, it's, I think he's going to be fine. I think, you know, he had a really strong April last year, too. If you go look it up, he had a great April. And then the rest of the summer, he kind of teetered yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And he recovered at the end of the season. He played well in September. Yeah. I think he was pretty good in the Yankees series. They didn't have a ton of great hitters in the playoffs, but right. he was good in the Yankees series. So I think, you know, he had a good start last year. And if, as long as he's getting on base, like, third, at a 320 clip, He'll help them out. Yeah. So just let me ask you because I was asking Jay earlier, what do you, what do you think the the panic uh, point comes for this season? If uh, if if I asked Jay if you divide it into three uh, into thirds, where does the panic point come in? What kind of record leads you to start thinking that this is this is not going to go well? I don't know if there's a specific record I would think about. I think it's what is the old saying? Memorial Day is when you really start looking at the standings. Yeah. So see where they are Memorial Day and see where your competition is. The Twins are off to a good start. If the Twins are, you know, marginally ahead on Memorial Day, then you could start thinking, okay, they've got a, a lot of ground to make up. Or if the White Sox, the White Sox aren't off to the greatest start. They had a good start, but they're not playing great since that mm-hmm. first series. So I would say Memorial Day is that old adage where you start looking at the standings, see where you are. And I know they're not looking at the standings in the clubhouse, you know, very consistently. But I would say Memorial Day, okay. you know, how, how many games are you back by the right, start of June right. when summer really starts to begin? Uh, James Karinchek off to a rough start. Obviously, he that first appearance, he completely imploded after he had that automatic uh, strike called or automatic ball called against him, and the crowd went just bananas. Are you worried about him at all? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, those are the things that we thought the rules were going to impact him the most. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's interesting they gave Trevor Stephan that contract extension. Mm-hmm. Him and Karinchek are the same age. They generally have the same – amount of control left contractually. So the interesting thing they went to Stefan for that extension and not not Karen check. Yeah. So I do think these rules could impact him, you know, quite a bit. I, I think he'll he won't be as bad as that. But will he be as good as he was in years past? I don't know. I think they're also I think part of it too, don't you think is there like the Guardians don't like guys that are <laughs> demonstrative. <laughs> uh, like, you know, they wanted Bauer out of they had they had enough of his shenanigans. Like, same thing with Clevenger. I think Plesak could be in that same type of group. And Karachek's also, he's kind of a little bit of a crazy guy. And he says wacky things. And they don't love guys like, they don't like the, anybody saying anything controversial. Unpredictability, right? Yes. That's probably their biggest they thing. Don't like they don't like They want someone they can predict personality-wise yeah. and on the field. And I think he's, he's usually quieter. I mean, he's quiet. He was never really like a, a very talkative guy in the minors. He's, yeah. you know, been opened up a lot more now. But I guess he is the most, you know, unpredictable. I would, I would assume. So yeah, yeah that's probably. I mean, not Trevor the, Steffen, like, I don't even, I can't even think of what his sad voice sounds like. I don't know if I've heard him talk. I probably have, but I, but I can't think of it. Overall, um, I think when you look, I think the the Guardians, you know, you're always looking for an edge, right? When, the, when analytics started, it was the small, the lower payroll. I'd say small market because that's bogus, but the smaller payroll teams that were looking for an edge. And now I, I think the Guardians have gotten out in front on putting the ball in play again, base running, moving. And now the rules are just favoring teams that do that. But also, I think when it comes to bullpen, like when the Mets signed Edwin Diaz this offseason, and I'm not saying this because he got hurt. I said it at the time. I think spending tons of money on the bullpen is stupid because even the best relief pitchers, as we all yep. know, with rare exceptions, Mariano Rivera, Trevor Hoffman, they could be great. Emmanuel Classe could be bananas, the best reliever in baseball for three years. That fourth year, he could have a six ERA. 
It's the most unpredictable thing. They're good at developing arms. Why would you ever spend a ton of money? And I think they've, I don't think we'll ever see the Guardians spend a ton of money in the bullpen again, ever. No, I'd have to agree. I mean, we also didn't know if they'd spend $100 million on two players you know, I didn't a couple think years they ago. Right. Yeah, so that's a surprise to yeah. all of us. No, I can't ever see them. They've never paid for no. relief pitching. Like Boone Logan in 2017 is the only guy externally I can think of they've ever really spent money on, and that didn't work out very well for them. So there, there's your point. Yeah, I mean, they have done such a good job. They do this, and the Rays are the two organizations that stand out, is they get guys before they become expensive, they, they sign some extensions here and there. I mean, the, the combination of Ramirez and Jimenez together is even out of the norm for them, as you say. But even with those two guys, they're not signed till 36, 37, 38. Most of these big contracts, you're signing guys till they're almost 40. They're never going to do that. They like to spend money on guys who are in their prime or young. And then when they get the most out of them, let somebody else pay them in their mid-30s. That's smart baseball. It pisses off the fans sometimes, oh. but nine times out of ten, it's smart baseball. Do, do you think they got enough uh, enough power um, to compete? I, I think they they can make the playoffs, but when you say you talk about winning the World Series, do they have enough power to do that? I hate to say it rests on one player like Josh Bell because you guys are talking about how he was struggling. I mm-hmm. hate to say it rests on one guy, but you know he's a big factor in that. Josh Naylor hit the ball hard. Um, I don't know how much you guys like talking about exit velocity, but he's he's hit the ball a lot harder so far to start the year. You know, Jimenez could have a little more pop. We know Jose can hit 30 home runs, but Josh Bell is kind of that guy in the middle. I feel like if they had Josh Bell, like the first half Josh Bell, he stunk when he went to San Diego last year, and he's he's yes. you know, kind of rolling over so far. Yeah. But like you said, he's usually pretty bad in April. But I feel like if they would have had the good version of Josh Bell, the one that was in Washington last year, yeah. they beat the Yankees. So I think they really truly were – a guy like that away from moving on to the next round. And if he can be the guy he was in Washington last year or this year, I think they'll have enough power. Yeah, I mean, they're going to get more power at a catcher. We know that. You know, assuming Zanino stays healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think right field's a question mark. Like, how much power are you going to get out of that? What's the combo going to be? What's that going to look like? I, I Listen, in a perfect world, they'd go get a, a proven right fielder and they'd go get one more proven starter. It's not a perfect world. That's really the only two things I could see them needing. So there's many other teams need a lot more than that. I don't. I think there's a thought out there that you can't win without power anymore. Like in the NFL, I'm like, you can't win without a top quarterback, right? And I think a lot of people look at baseball the same way. You can't win without a without power. I'm not sure because, like I said, it's really the Rays and the Guardians that play this way. All the other teams that don't have power don't have power because they're they're just bad teams. The Guardians and Rays are the only good teams that don't have power. And both those teams have consistently gone to the playoffs. And so, I don't know. Like, I'm not I, – I think the Guardians – I think it's wrong to say, well, they can't win unless they hit more home runs. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not convinced of that. I know it's harder to string together hits in the playoffs because, in theory, you're facing better pitching. But I do think the American League at the top, and usually we look at the Yankees and the Astros, is not quite as good as it's been. I, what do you think about that? I don't think the Astros are as good – as last year. I don't think the Yankees are. I know they, they've they added some, but they're old. They already got 10 guys on the DL. They're going to have a lot of injuries. Yeah, the Yankees' rotation is already decimated. Yes. The Astros lost Justin Verlander. Yep. They and still McCullers got is hurt. Yeah, McCullers is hurt. He's been hurt. Yeah, they, there's a lot of questions there, absolutely. And I think you're right. You don't have to be at the top of the, the league in power. Right. But, I mean, the only team in baseball that hit less home runs last year than Cleveland was Detroit. Right. You know, Detroit stinks. Yeah. So, I think you don't need to be, like, Hitting, you don't have to have an Aaron Judge in your lineup, be right. top 10 in power. I don't know if you can consistently be 29th in the league in power. I think I, that's, you know, you have to move up a little bit. Probably, I think. Yeah. but I just, I don't know if we have any sample size to know for sure because the Guardians are the well, only team, maybe the Rays. I mean, I mean, but where were the Rays? They were pretty low too, weren't they? They were like middle, yeah, they were like middle they of the pack middle? or close okay. to bottom 10. Has there ever been a, sm- I wouldn't call a small ball. There has back in the day, yeah, but, but I mean, in recent in, years, in, no. In recent, because recent, no. I'm trying to think about a team who, just say, all right, we're going to steal bases. We'll move runners. We're going to uh, put the ball in I play. I mean, the Cardinals had teams the like that back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, but in recent years, yeah. But then, but there aren't a lot of teams playing that way these days. Right. So that's why I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I that's think it has throwback. more to do with the guys are not playing that way more than it can't be done. But yes, I do think you want to be at least, the Guardians are never going to be near the top in power, at least not with their current roster. Because, you know, Quan and Straw, those guys aren't hitting it for any power. Right, you're not getting any power. Rosario doesn't hit for much power, but they're good, especially Rosario and Quan are really good players. You want them to play every day offensively. 
Uh, so, but yeah, if they can get to the middle of the pack, I think they can absolutely win the World Series this year. And it really matters what they do in the postseason. You know, who cares about what your power numbers are in the regular season? Because yeah. once you get to October, none of that matters. And I know there's stats out there. I don't have them off the top of my head. But, you know, a large percentage of your your runs in the postseason come from home runs. Right, that's true. You know, true. because you're getting through on homers. Look what yep. the Yankees did. Mm -hmm. I think Cleveland had more hits in that series yeah. against the Yankees, but Maybe the Yankees it. had more right. through on homers. So you just need that timely one. That's why I say Josh Bell, you know, I hate to say it's, it rests on one player, but, yeah. you know, that's but you're not thing. worried. You wouldn't be about not being worried about him, right? Oh, not at all. He's yeah. still walking, too. That's the important thing. Do you guys yeah. remember how long we went through this with Carlos Santana? Yes. You know, oh, bad April. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'd be he'd be hitting like 150 with a 380 on base. <laughs> and by the end of the year, he was fine. He was fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, I, They're very similar players. I, I think he'll hit some home runs. All right, what's your uh, favorite opening day memory there, Justin? Wrap Man, I've got so many. Uh, this is my 18th straight opening day that I've gone to. I started going in 2005. You know, hey, that's a nice home opener. Nice home opener. Street, okay. Yeah, not wow, season. I like that. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. I like yeah. that. That's yeah. crazy. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I went to a lot with my dad. My dad, I hate to bring this up on the air. My dad just, just passed away this week, but oh, we, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to bring the mood He's down. He's the one that brought the love of baseball. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. 18 straight years. This was my first without him. So uh, I have to say going all those years with him was good. I was at the snow opener. Yeah, uh, oh, wow. that was pretty wow. rough to start through. Um, what was it, the year Michael Brantley, after he came back from the injury in 2017, he had the walk-off hit. Yep. That, was, that was a cool moment. And then, yeah. you know, 2021 was a weird year because we didn't have the, the season in 2020 right, and no one yeah. was there. Mm -hmm. And then 2021 was like, I don't know, a quarter full. Yeah. So that was really weird to be at, yes. but it was nice to be back. Yeah, yeah. That's well, have a great time out there. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll talk appreciate to you again you, soon. Man. Thanks for having Justin me. Justin Lotta, check, on the Locked on, check out the Locked On Guardians podcast. Uh, he, loves, he loves baseball. And condolences to your dad. Very, yeah, very sorry. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks again, right, Justin. And that interview Mike. was brought to us by Colleague Racing, the official NASCAR team of Northeast Ohio. When we bring Justin out. Let me tell you guys about the membership platform and program of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. For just $1.99 a month, you can become a Starters Tier member of UCSS that gets you loyalty badges, custom emojis, and members-only community posts for the big ballers out there. For $4.99 a month, less than 5 bucks a month, less than $60 for the entire year. You get put in the coaches tier that gives you all the same starter tier perks, plus overtime videos, member shout outs, discount codes for merch, and much more, including the opportunity to sh uh, text with Jason Lloyd and others for select Cavs, Guardians games, etc. It is worth the price of mission, I promise you. For overtime today, as we do every Friday, we answer your viewer questions. We got a couple great ones so far, but we're going to make it quick today so we can get down to progressive field with Justin and the rest of the uh, Guardians fans to enjoy. Bull, we got 15 minutes left. Yeah. He just asked Justin his favorite opening day memories. What are some of your guys' favorite home opener memories? Um, you know, it's funny. I'm thinking about it now, and I'm realizing that I, I never went to an opening. I, I've been to opening days, like, as a media member, covering the Guardians and sitting in the press box, but that's not the same as being no. a fan and going mm -hmm. to the game. Right. I've never gone to an opening day game for the Guardians as a fan, and I've never, and as, since I didn't grow up in Chicago as a Cubs fan growing up, I never went to opening day, and I've missed, I missed that experience. But the last couple of years, I've taken Aaron out of school for, for like, home openers to, to watch him on TV. But I don't know, so I don't have that memory, like my dad and I going to – Opening day. Do you guys have that? No, because for me, uh, I don't. I've never been to an opening day. Game. Yeah. Why? Because the opening day in Cleveland is always cold, right? Mm -hmm. And so I refuse to go to a game where I'm gonna sit outside and be cold. So I'd rather <laughs> pick that up later on when it's warmer, right? So I can enjoy myself. Because I, 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 for me, I do the same thing for football. I said I'm not a proponent for sitting out at the Browns I'm game and when it's when it's cold. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's like, not. I would never mm -hmm. like doing them pregame shows. Like it's it's horrible. Because you, you might as well be outside. We out there at nine. You out there with the muni lot people. Yeah. But my, my, my best uh, experience was, man, and, and we, I never, so first, in full disclosure, I never got to stay home for nothing. <laughs> like, my mom was like, if school open, You're you in. going. It, like, you know, last week of school, people don't be there. Like, people just be like, yeah, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'll be there with the teacher. Yeah, you going all the way to the last day. So this happened to be so in '94, the Indians. People don't remember the day was they was good before the strike happened, right? right. So right. they was like in first place. They was battling with the White Sox, um, and then so that year strike happens. 
season's done. The next year, they come back. 95 opening day. They had the, the all whites on with the with the with the Indians across the chest. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, for some reason, I don't know if I was legitimately sick or how I got this off, but I was able <laughs> to be at the crib and I'm like, man, I like so I didn't have no cable in my room. So I'm watching. I'm, I, I got the old school prong system with the rabbit ears. Okay. So we got the joints. You know, how you put the rabbit ears on the right. prongs in the right. back. Man, I for some reason, I don't know how I was getting this. The, my TV never came in as clear. <laughs> Man, I had about fifty five percent color. Yeah, clarity. Clarity. I said, bro, this was this is this is yeah, HD. Clarity. This yeah. is HD. Is this gonna come? I watched that game, man. I was so pumped. I was up there sitting around my room. Yeah. Uh, they ended up losing that game, by the way. Right. But that year was like I can remember that year because at the point that point, the Browns wasn't here, and I was so I was just so excited that we had anything. Right. And, and I knew the Guardians was or the Indians was going to be the best thing moving. And then that '95 year came yeah. around. I think my whole family watched every single like that man. was available. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was the start of it. To, you know, Justin mentioned the 2017 opener. Yeah, obviously, um, in 2016, they went to the World Series. There was the heartbreak for fans of losing the World Series, blowing a 3-1 lead. The Guardian, the Indians went out and spent money that offseason. You remember they went and got uh, um, Edwin Encarnacion. Mm. What, when, did they, when did they get born the Swisher? That was before that. That was a few years before that. Was that. Those, those were the two of the worst moves they made, and I liked them both at the time. I loved them. <laughs> loved them. They were both total flops, disasters. But um, on opening day, Justin mentioned it, coming off that, you know, a great season that ended with disappointment. And then the Guardian, I don't remember what the date was, but it was like a late home opener because the Guardians had started, I think they had played like seven, eight games on the road to start that season. It was against the White Sox and Brantley doubles to score Lindor. Mm -hmm. And everybody went nuts because obviously on opening day, there's a huge crowd. Mm -hmm. And it was a good feeling. And remember the 2017 Indians, they were – they were actually in the regular season a way better team than the 2016 Indians. Yeah, they were. Remember they had that huge winning streak. They mm-hmm. huge. They won, they won like 20 something, 20 in a, in a row or 21. I can't remember now how many and, games it was. But they won. then they got smoked, smoked in the playoffs. Sm- they yeah. lost to the Astros. It was bad. Yeah, yeah, it was ugly, and I was going nuts. <laughs> but it was a hell of a fun season. It was uh, until that point, and and I know the question was because they that winning streak was late. It was like into September. Because everybody, everybody was in. It was the most I'd ever seen people into regular season baseball in Cleveland. And now, because I remember they was doing a promotion. It was a window company or something. I think the window company that was giving away free windows, like basically. something about till the winning streak so, ended. Winning or something. Streak yeah, was yeah, in yeah, there. yeah. So they was like, it yeah, was crazy. We no just, money down, no financing. Come here, give me some extra windows, bro. <laughs> And, and they 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 did it to the winners. So I think it was yeah. 22, 23 games or something like that. What? But go ahead, Mikey. I have two more things I want to get to about yeah. the Guardians. Okay. This breaking news, as of the last two minutes, it's silly breaking news with breaking news. Oh. Take a tag board. The Guardians have unveiled the championship belt for the twenty twenty three hot dog derby races Uh-oh. this year. How You're, do I win that? I want to win that belt at some point this is year. Is that like is Joey Chestnut in this competition? No, I think it's for the no, you know, mustard, the, ketchup, and onions. How they the oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's a championship belt. that's going to be handed out daily. That's a belt? It does, oh, I see. It's on yeah, the it's, base, It's right? kind of like G's belt. It's just you can't see it wrapped around. Right, right, right. So yeah. I want that belt at some point. Shout out to, shout out to Curtis. You're stealing your idea. Yeah, they stole that. Curtis got that from when he was here. Shout out to, but listen, we, we working on a deal. He yeah. told me. When I give my mascot, he gonna let my mascot come and run with with with, with their mascot. Oh, good, I like so that. So like, yeah, you lucky I see, you lucky I had to buy something. And you was out of here. I ooh, Paxton is on the move. What are the odds of of mustard winning the belt this year? Plus ten thousand. They be doing. They Isn't be, mustard the one that always mustard the one that never won last year? I mustard think, the one never the one never won. Yeah, I think it's like WWE where they write storylines. Yeah, So right. I would expect mustard to have a mu- big bounce back. You know. You think so? I think mustard. But just, mustard's like plus ten thousand in Vegas. Yeah, very low odds. Yeah. Uh, last one I want to ask you guys. Yeah. Well, you put this in our chat yesterday. Yeah. And I have not been here long enough to know whether it's true or not. So I'm curious what you guys take. Okay. Is Progressive Field and is the Cle- Cleveland home fan base does that give the guardians a true home field advantage or do you not believe in home field advantage in baseball whatsoever I, go I, ahead i would Greg. say this i yeah. said uh in the guardians slash indians heyday in the 90s when, yes when it was rocking 
and, and capacity every night. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was definitely a home field advantage. There oh, was no yeah. question. You couldn't come into Cleveland yeah. and not expecting some smoke. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. now, you know, we are to a point where we come like last year. We didn't really start coming till late, right? Yeah, we didn't right. Start so getting, we're right. really on the players, right? So it's not much of a, a home field advantage as it could be, right? They're hopeful that through this new stadium redesign and making it more fan friendly and speeding the game up that people are going to return here. But right. it's always going to depend upon the home field event. It's always going to depend upon the product on the field. Right. I, I will say back in the day, when you had that lineup, it, it, you, you would have to you would have to come into Cleveland and the lineup was just it, you, you, there was never enough runs. You had to beat the you had to beat the Indians by eight. Because right. they, at any given time, they could get Lofton and started off. Kenny Lofton, oh, Kenny's on. Now, all of a sudden, Omar get on. Now, you got guys that can run a little bit. Now, you got three through seven that can hit two, three run home some runs. Some points, three through nine. Three through nine at some point. <laughs> So it was yeah. it was crazy. It was it was just rock. That was a very there. different team. We talk about not enough power. That team had more than enough oh, power. Uh, they didn't have the whoa. pitching that these teams have had. But they had the, the, they had the sticks. They <laughs> listen. I wasn't around in those days. Obviously, it seemed like watching it on TV. There was a major home field advantage. What's interesting is uh, hold on. Before you, yeah. what, what was the, what was the as you live in outside the market? What yeah. was what was the perception? of watching the Indians back then. Oh, as a massive as baseball a, yeah. fan, I loved watching them play. I what's funny is I almost always rooted for the National League. As a National League fan, I almost always rooted for the National League in the World Series. But even though I had no connection or allegiance to Cleveland at the time, I rooted for the Indians in both of those World Series against the Braves and 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 the Marlins, especially the Marlins one. Well, the Braves one I didn't like because they were always really good. Yeah. That ticked me yeah. off. But the Marlins, I was like, the Marlins, they shouldn't win a World Series. Like, I, as a Cubs fan, and I always thought this was like, the only thing that got screwed up was the Cubs and the Indians playing in the World Series. Because until then, I felt like the Cubs and Indians fans were like the same. Right, right, Because right. they had gone forever without winning. Once the Red Sox won especially, it was like, we're the only two fan bases that haven't won in forever, so we can root for each other. But unfortunately, it happened the way it did. But I rooted for the Indians in both those World Series. I loved watching those teams play. It, as a kid watching, you know, and I was in my 20s in those years, but I thought those teams were super fun to watch. Right, right. And I watched them as often as I could. It wasn't easy to, to, to see them. Yeah. You know, I didn't have cable in those days, but uh, as much as I could, I would watch them. And I certainly rooted for both of those teams because I didn't want to see some Marlins team that just came into baseball winning the World Series, and unfortunately they did. But the interesting thing, I, and I'm curious for you guys, is – in 2016 for the World Series, the games in Cleveland, it was not a home field advantage. No. Because no. there were as many Cubs fans as Indians fans. Oh, that's, yeah, that's. But in 95, 97, <laughs> like in, in 95 and 97, the Braves and the Marlins, especially the Marlins, but even the Braves, those fan bases don't, don't travel. Have, it's not like the Cubs, mm -hmm. yeah. which is just a couple hours away, a lot of money in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it probably felt like a much bigger home advantage for those World Series without being here. Yeah. It was. Uh, and in general, I think Cleveland fans do a great job of making noise at our stadiums yes. slash arenas. Yes. I, I think I think the the Cavs have a home court advantage. Yes. Uh, Loudville is literally loud. I think it's just the way the place is built. Yes. And I think they did a good job of not selling it out. Like all the corporate guys when LeBron was here, sometimes yeah. it had a corporate feeling where Guys was too too you know had too many many bags of money. Right, right. They'd be sitting down there going crazy. Now you see a lot of regular guys, yeah. regular people down there. That's good. I think when you talk about you know uh, the playoff games against the Yankees, that last year that place was loud as heck. It was. It was it loud, was, which is tough because obviously New York got a lot of money. Yeah. Maybe I think Yankee fans for an ALDS are not going to travel as much as the Cubs fans for a World Series because the Yankees have been in the playoffs so many right, right. times. But I think that was just an unfortunate, unique circumstance. But in general, I think there is all like the Brown Stadium sucks. So yeah, it, yeah, the sound is bad. It's, it's, it's bad. Everything it's, stinks. But well, but, there is there is a stat I was looking at the yeah. other day. Don't they take it like uh, like when they told look at it? It's like an advanced metric when they take a look at good baseball hitting ballparks. Like they take a look at yeah, yeah, rank sure. them. Yeah. Uh, is is Progressive Field a medium ballpark? Is it a hitter's ballpark? I, you know, or is it a? It, would you classify? I, it? I can't remember because I haven't looked at the list in a while. 
I, I want to say it's it's kind of middle of the road. I don't think it's a huge favor of either the hitting or the pitch. I think it's a fair park. Okay. I think it's a middle of the road fair park. Now, if you there's play- not the we, with. It's like you know, at Wrigley Field, when the wind's blowing out, it's a huge hitter's park, and when the wind's blowing in, it's a big pitcher's park. Or, or the Today, Yankees. you know, Jay talked about the wind blowing in from right, mm-hmm. so for lefties, it'll be tricky to get it out of here. But I think it plays kind of neutral. Am I wrong, Mike? What, what, so no, you, you are there. 